How's it going, everybody? Today, I'm taking a look at some really cool devices from Linovation, the CTR2 MIDI and the Micro above my head. Although they look very similar, they have very different capabilities. The MIDI, for instance, is connected to my iPad, which is controlling smart SDR with those programmable buttons. But the Micro kind of takes it to the next level, and you physically can, if you want to, connect this to just about any of the modern base station radios, and you can get station control via this as well well as adding really cool features like the ability to look at what's going on on a phone when you're on the same network as that device. Let's take a look at the micro because I think that's going to have the most appeal to just about any amateur that has a base station, modern-ish base station that can physically connect to this thing or even over the Wi-Fi, your home network. Now, the Micro has a bunch of ports on the side here, so it has a cat control which you're going to want to use if you are on a modern-ish radio and you want physical control of the device, as well as a slot for paddles and a key or PTT connection, right? So if you need to PTT the radio for various reasons, you can do that. And it's, you know, it's very, very small. They're both powered over USB, but as you can see, I, I don't have to have the thing connected to the iPad to make it work. I just need a battery of some kind to be connected, which makes it pretty cool. You could connect it to the iPad if you want, but you, you don't have to do that. Now, both of these have wireless capabilities. In this case, this one uses Bluetooth, but this one has Wi-Fi, meaning I can base this, connect this to my home Wi-Fi, and I can control a wirelessly connected radio if it's on the network, or I can use a physical connection as well via the cat. So let me show you what that looks like when it's set up on my station. Now, in the simplest sense, it's easy as just plugging in a USB-C for power, which I use to connect to the smart SDR software here. And with it connected, I can just go in here and change my VFO and scroll this around. So it's like having a, a remote VFO. For you Flex Radio users, particularly ones that have a shack where you're by the radio, this is pretty easy to use or by the application that's running the radio. And if you add a tip ring sleeve connection for your key, well, you can go straight to paddles as well. Now, a little brass tax right up top. To do this, you're going to need a CAT control, computer-assisted terminal control. That uses a serial port on your radio. Now, normally, the way a lot of people think these days is that means just a USB port. You plug it in, and all you're, you're set to go. Well, that's uh, CAT over universal serial bus. That's not the traditional CAT control that you might be familiar with. Uh, the older way of connecting radios, if you will, to devices. So you will have to bodge up a cable if you require CAT control. Otherwise, if you have a network connected radio, think of like an ICOM 7610 or a Flex Radio 8600 along those lines, something where you've got a, an actual network connection to it, then the CTR2 Micro can just connect to it over the network and it can do CAT over the network. So just keep that in mind. If you have something like a Yaesu, like an FTDX10, um, I think the 101D has the actual network plug, but like the FTDX10 or the 710, then you will have to get their little network device or just build yourself up a cable. I'm overlaying kind of some of the information here to do that. Now, um, important note, when you are using the CTR2 Micro, it does come with dip switches on the back, and these dip switches are used to set up the CAT control, and that's exactly what you do. You go up or down on these depending on what the type of mode is, and again, I'm overlaying on the screen with what your different settings are. So do keep that in mind is there's a little bit of doing with the micro. Uh, the MIDI, which I'll show you later, is just a MIDI device, which is its own little kind of black magic-y kind of fun thing that you can play around with. But this is a really handsome device in terms of features, but you do got to learn a little bit. Speaking about a bit of setup, uh, let's show you how to get this going for the first time. Before you can interface with the network via the onboard Wi-Fi in this device, which is kind of its handiest thing. You give it power and it connects to your Wi-Fi or whatever you're connected to. Uh, you're going to need to connect this to a computer to set it up for the first go. And it's just a USB-C cable to whatever you want to connect to. And it should show up with a port right there. And if you scroll down a little bit, you will need the manual, trust me. Scroll down a little bit past the Mac side, unless you're using a Mac, follow that directly. And then go to Appendix D, because it needs to connect to a terminal application. Now, this manual talks about using TerraTerm, which is a fine uh, serial interface type controller, but I generally use PuTTY. So if you want to use PuTTY or TerraTerm, it's fine either way. You got to set up the port for the device. So that's where you say serial and you give it the port number for your device. Your port number is going to be a little bit differently. And then you're going to follow this uh, to the letter. I've already done that. I've got it running. So let me show you what you're faced with when uh, you see it for the first time. Now I've gone through the process of creating a port here for my CTR2 micro. So I'm going to load that 
it's on COM34 in my case with uh, the speed of 115,200. And then I've gone through and followed a number of other things that uh, it recommends in the guide. So do follow the manual pretty much to the letter. But let me open it. And I'm greeted with this little controller here. I think my dimensions are a little bit off, so I'll adjust this. But if I hit a button, so that is uh, my radio. It is advertising connection to the radio. Now, I, I have gone through the process of setting this up, but you'll see I should have uh, parallel control, which I do. So if you hit control M, that brings up your menu, basically. And that's where you go in and set your configuration for uh, your radio, a number of other things. But we'll get back to that. First thing you got to do is hit Control W, and that selects your Wi-Fi, right? And then once you get the Wi-Fi set up, it'll connect manually over the Wi-Fi, and then you can access it um, still via the port if you want to, or you can access it via Wi-Fi via its IP address. In our case, I'm going to use the Wi-Fi the Wi-Fi address. So I'm going to close that after acknowledging the Wi-Fi address for my local network. And if I type it into my browser, I get this new window, and this is actually the controller window. Uh, for the device. If I want to, I can go into menu here, give it a second, and I can then go through the process of configuring my radio. In this case, I'm going to go to configuration. We want Wi-Fi on. Radio 1 is the profile that I have selected, but it's a flex type radio. How do, how do I know that? Well, that's what I have selected, and these are the different types of radios that it supports. Thetis being an SDR software, as well as some of the others, and then you have the more traditional Yaesu, Elecraft, Flex, you get it. So I'm going to hit Escape and go back. So that's my main menu there. Let's go to Themes, poke around a little bit here. Sometimes I've found that there's a little lag with some of the configuration menus, but the general radio control is, is pretty quick because it's using the device to control the radio directly. And sometimes you got to wait a little bit on the device when you try and do a theme or whatnot. As you can see, it's scrolling through all this stuff. Okay. I like it, Picasso. All right, anyway. So Wi-Fi, it's giving me a little detail there. This is my uh, frequency, so I can change the... I can type in a frequency if I want to do that. Let's go up to 50 and hit accept. Let's see what it does. And yeah, jump my radio to 14050. I can change to a different band if I want to. Sometimes there's a little lag. I will admit that there is a little lag. This device runs off of an ESP32 chip, which uh, is not a powerhouse, but it comes with features like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and all that other fun stuff you want. So let's hit OK. All right, that worked even better. So you get all your controls basically right up front. Now, why why is this layer like, Josh, you're literally sitting in front of your smart SDR software. Why do you need this? Well, the idea is that you could potentially use this on your phone. Like if you are away from your shack radio, you wanted something really simple to control. Maybe, yeah, maybe you have all this whiz -bang stuff like with a Flex or a new Icom or new Yesu, but you're like, ah, I just really want to do CW and I want to plug a key into the side of this device and, and get on my way. And that will work. That will work just fine with that in mind. Let's go back to that menu and show you some of the other options you have. So let's go back to menu. There we go. All right. So we got frequency, VFO. Obviously, you can change bands if you want to do that. We've got uh, text transmit message and edit transmit message as well as key or configuration. I'm in CW mode right now. So let's go to edit TX message. These are little scripted messages that you could set up. And if we go back to escape here, go back to menu, I'm doing the wrong buttons. You can, there's a faster way to do that. And I go to TX mes message. Now I can just click that and I can transmit the message directly, which, okay, that's pretty cool as well if I wanted to go through that process. And that allows you to have keying maybe on your phone or some other device like that by accessing again the device over Wi-Fi or whichever network you have access to. And so you might be thinking to yourself, Josh, that's a whole lot of work. What What is the point of all this? Well, it's it's kind of handy if you are not necessarily at your station. Physically, your radio is not there. And, and maybe if you have an ICOM or a, or a Yesu, then this might not be that big a thing for you. But with a flex radio, you can put that thing anywhere, right? As long as it has a network connection, power, and the antenna, you can access it via smart SDR and a number of other applications. Or in this case, like my phone with this screen. And then with this device on my desktop, which I have in my shack, I can just be keying whatever I want. You're good to go. And so this is actually a really easy way to get a Morse code key, like a paddle, into your flex without having to physically connect something to it or go about some other means of doing it. You only have the connection via the device, your computer, that accesses the radio. 
But okay, that's the fancy device. That's the device that has kind of all the bells and whistles. What if you just want the ability to control an application that you're running on another device, whether it be a computer or a tablet in my case? Well, then you'd want the CTR2 MIDI. Now, if you've ever heard the term MIDI before, some of you musicians probably know it very well, it's a way to basically chain devices together to issue remote commands to like an instrument, MIDI commands. Well, this also works with smart SDR and a number of other SDR applications for controlling software-defined radios. In fact, the Hermes Light, a number of other ones, Thetis, software-defined radio software, they will all take in MIDI controls. Again, the software will for allowing you to do standard manipulations of the radio. So let me show you what that looks like using the Flex and the MIDI and an iPad. Now for me, this CTR MIDI is really the sweet device. It's a simple device, but it allows me to do something that's uh, really unique. So I find myself you know, traveling around either on planes or just with my family in any given week or weekend. And I still want to be able to play radio quickly, effectively, and then get on with my life. And so for a long time, I've been using applications like Smart SDR on my iPad or SDR Control for ICOM radios. Again, these are made by Marcus. I've done a review of them on my channel. It's really cool stuff. I'll drop links to check them out. Uh, DL8MRE is his call sign. Anyway, with this, I can go ahead and um, I can connect to my radio from wherever I'm at, assuming I have an internet connection. So I just tether it to my phone and, and there you go. Um, or I can just be at home on my own Wi-Fi. I can be sitting down and connecting to my radio from my massage chair or the bed or my office or, or whatever. The downside is, is that, you know, this is, this is okay. I can just click around and, you know, we're sliding. Hey, look, there's some activity, fun stuff. But I like to have a key, you know, if in case I want to chase a POTA or I want some VFO control to listen to what's going on. And the MIDI helps you do that. So what you do is you just power it from any means. It could be on the device, or in this case, I'm using a little Anker Nano battery that I keep with me. And now it's ready to connect. All I need to do is go to Tools. I go to MDR or the CTR2 MIDI, and I wait. I wait. It didn't connect. No big deal. I hit Find. It should see Low Energy Bluetooth device. It got it. And then I can go back to the pan adapter, and now I have... VFO control. And if I plug in my key, I will also have the ability to send Morse code when I'm anywhere, I, you know, anywhere in the house or on the network, so long as I have a secured network connection. And I haven't done a video on it, but if you are so inclined to set up your own VPN network, there's a really, really cool application called Tailscale. I highly recommend you check that out because it has, from my point of view, revolutionized the capability of doing Morse code or connecting to a radio when you're out and about. So there we go. I should now have, yeah, so I can, all right, there we go. Anyway, send a test really quick. Now with that, now I have a control to take with me uh, for doing Morse code, VFO, the whole nine yards. But there's buttons on the side, and those are programmable as well with this application. So if you go back to tools, and you go to edit mapping for that controller, we can now click one of these buttons and it says, oh, main audio mute toggle. Oh, okay, I can unmute my tablet or mute it again. Great. What's the next one? Band next. What's the next one? Mode next. So it'll change to the mode of operation. This one for me, I'd probably put to PTT or something, but what's next? Uh, noise reducer, having that on and off. Really, really handy. Zoom in. Zoom in the bandwidth of, the, uh, of your SDR. And then what's this guy? Uh, tuning step. Okay, sure. So let's let's try some of that out really fast. Let's go back to the pan adapter. Let's unmute. Sure enough, I can hear it now. You may not be able to hear it that well, but I'm going to go ahead and change this to upper sideband. And let's engage the noise reducer. Did it do it? It sure did. You can see a little bit of change there. Very good, so working as expected. I can take this with me and I can get radio control, do different radio things with this and allows me to get through the band relatively quickly instead of having to click around or type, which I don't really enjoy. I like to be able to just scan quickly to get to what I'm looking for. There's somebody. Hey, Walter in Florida. Oh, Calgary in Canada. Very nice. So yeah, 
Keep this one with me. It weighs nothing. Stays in my pack along with my iPad or a computer that I'm running Smart SDR or whatever SDR software you're going to run. Makes it really, really nice and easy, and you can throw a key in there as well if that's what you want to do. So thanks for taking a quick look with me at the CTR2 devices, the Mini and the MIDI. I've been doing a bit of deep dive in some of the weird little esoteric devices in amateur radio, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. And I appreciate it. it's probably not all your kettle of fish, but if you have been enjoying it, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Uh, we're going to go back to the old radio reviews and how-tos in the future, but I've just been having a blast playing around with all this fun technology that exists out there. If you've got something weird and interesting that you'd like to have me take a look at, uh, let me know about it. Send me a link or you can DM me on Discord. There's links in the video description to my Discord and you can send me a DM there or hit me up in one of the chat rooms. Uh, you can always email me at josh at hamtactical.com. I take your emails and questions there as well. Um, whatever it is, hit me up on Instagram as well. Just having a blast out there with all this radio and fun stuff going on and I hope you're having fun too because it's never been a better time to be an amateur radio operator. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ73.